So today we have kind of a fun subject. I have two grandsons and I want to teach them to collect bugs in jars and acquaint them with my backyard inhabitants. And this is a jar that I found called Recap Explore Bug Catcher. And it has a flip top on it. It fits on mason jars, even the glass mason jars, but the jar that comes with it looks like a mason jar, but it's just plastic. It has this green removable handle and the top already has the holes in it. So if you're like me, maybe when you were little, you grabbed a smucker's jar or something and popped a couple holes in the top, or maybe even just put the top on loose, but the bugs often just died out from suffocation. It also has replaceable gaskets for the inside of it. So this thing's pretty cool. It's plastic. It is BPA free. So non-toxic and uh, you can see the magnifying lid works pretty good here. Now cautionary tale about magnifying lids. If you were like me when you were little and you first discovered magnifying glasses, you can use the sun to start a fire and burn things. So little cautionary tale there. Um, it's pretty good. The top will actually come off if you want it to, including the magnifying part. Here's the label on the back so you can just get a good look at it. And the cap uh, glows in the dark too, so that's kind of interesting. And here it is the way I'm going to use it. And one of the things I want to collect, which is probably the most fun in the summertime, is not these Japanese beetles. Japanese beetles communicate through pheromone. And they find each other, and then like these two are doing, they mate and make more Japanese beetles to eat your plants. What we're after is this little firefly, also known as a lightning bug. So you can find them during the day. They just cling to branches. This one is not eating this leaf. So those holes are from other bugs. And here's another curious insect. In other words, there are bugs everywhere, and kids can have a great time just collecting them in their jar and bringing them home maybe for you to look at or give them an insect book so they can learn to look up and classify bugs themselves. And here we have some native pollinators, little wasps, and in the back you see the little sweat bee there, and this is on a plant called Queen Anne's Lace. There's interesting insects everywhere in your yard if you just look. So, but today, of course, we want to get into these lightning bugs. Now, lightning bugs communicate with flashing light. And that's how they're going to find mates. And what we're showing you here are their bioluminescence. And some species of lightning bugs don't flash at all. They're diurnal. And uh, they communicate with pheromone. But here in the northeastern United States, we're looking at the bugs that communicate through flashing light. Now, there are mimics within the uh, firefly species that replicate the flashing lights of other species of fireflies. And it will be an imitation of a female, and she will lure the male in who's flying around trying to find a mate. And then when he approaches her, she actually eats him. So she imitates the same species, but she is not. Now, the fireflies that I'm showing you here actually do not eat when they are mature. They just ingest, um, they can't chew, so they get uh, nectar. That's why you see them on plants that yield a lot of nectar, along with the other um, nectar-collecting insects. Now, they're very easy to collect. You can actually, at dusk, see them flying just three or four feet off the ground. And you can walk up and scoop your hand under a flying firefly and it will land right on your hand. And then you can just flip the top open on your bug jar and toss it right in there. Now when they're inside the bug jar, they'll try to climb to the top. So give it a little tap down just before you toss in more bugs and before you know it, you'll have an entire jar full of these fantastic fireflies, AKA lightning bugs. Now, one of the ways we know that these are the nocturnal species of firefly is the size of their eyes. If you look closely, and these are drinking nectar that I made for them, 
their eyes are enormous and that's so they can see in every direction at night and find mates with flashing lights. Now the female will remain stationary and it's the male that flies around and they flash back and forth and then they join each other of course on leaves of plants that are tall. Now in some areas the fireflies are in decline and that's largely because of broad pesticide use. Um, firefly larvae are also known as glowworms and they actually feed on snail larvae and slug larvae in the soil. So when you're treating for those insects, when you're treating for snails and slugs and broadcasting pesticides into the soil, keep in mind that you're probably also killing off the beneficial species that would otherwise destroy them. And here's my collection of fireflies sitting in my backyard. And I'll just let you watch them a little bit and listen to the environment. You can hear frogs on my pond. Remember that fireflies, this species anyway, does not bite, so it's a great introduction to the insect world from kids, especially during the summertime. We are here in July, and the best time for you to go out and collect the fireflies is just at dusk when you can still see them flying around, and you can just go around and catch them in your hand. Of course, it's the males that are flying through the air, and you'll find the females on plants, and they'll sit as high up as they can go in the grasses and you'll see them flashing there and you can just scoop those up with your hand. They tend to just drop off of the leaves so you can hold your jar next to it and tap above the firefly and she'll just drop right into the jar. Now don't forget to put a damp paper towel on the bottom of your jar. Uh, that keeps their bodies moist. These are soft body beetles and they definitely don't want to dry out. So that's an added bonus if you put that in there for them. And the nectar that you saw me feeding them earlier on was just 50-50 sugar water. Try not to keep your bugs more than 24 hours. So if your kids collect them, you know, on Friday night or whatever, make sure they're going to release them the following Friday or the following day so that those insects can get back to what they're supposed to do. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope you introduce your kids to the fun of collecting bugs. Thank you for watching.